while he was washing his face he incidentally felt a thin ridge of tissue that was running forward across masseter muscle toward the upper lip being a medical student he reviewed his anatomy textbook and found that this was normal which of the following is the most likely structure he felt the first option is the superior labial artery the superior labial artery is a branch of the facial artery and the facial artery it enters the face around the inferior border of the mandible this is located just anterior to masseter muscle here you can see again the facial artery in front of masseter muscle and this is the position where the pulsations of the artery can be felt as you can see here the facial artery has a tortuous course on the face toward the medial angle of the eye it passes deep to the sheet of dilator muscles this is one of the dilator muscles here so it passes deep to the dilator muscles of the mouth and it gives off an inferior and a superior labial branches these branches they run deep to the uh, facial muscles and part of their course and supply the upper and lower lip the superior labial artery thus lies more anterior to masseter at another location from where the thin ridge was felt by the medical student so the first option is wrong the second option the maxillary artery here you can see a dissection of the maxillary artery uh, after removal of the ramus of the mandible neck and head and the uh, coronoid process the maxillary artery is a terminal branch of the external carotid artery here is the external carotid dividing into superficial temporal and maxillary artery the maxillary artery passes deep to the neck of the mandible in its way into the pterygopalatine fossa therefore the maxillary artery is deeply located and it's a wrong choice the third choice facial vein the facial vein runs posterior to the facial artery you can see the facial vein in here also on the front of masseter but it is posterior to the facial artery toward the medial canthus of the eye and it is characterized by a straighter course than the artery which is tortuous having this course anterior to masseter therefore it is away from where the ridge was felt this is another dissection of the infratemporal fossa after removal of the ramus of the mandible and we can see the main nerve here is the mandibular nerve a branch from the posterior division of the mandibular nerve is the auriculotemporal nerve this nerve the auriculotemporal nerve passes backwards and laterally from the mandibular nerve at the base of the skull in the infratemporal fossa and it passes medial to the neck of the mandible again it's deep and um, then as it reaches the parotid gland it runs upwards in front of the external acoustic meatus to supply the uh, scalp so here is where the auriculotemporal nerve runs in front of the trachea's of the ear accompanied by the superficial temporal artery it supplies the auricle and the skin over the temple hence it's called the auriculotemporal nerve but it also contains parasympathetic secretomotor fibers for the parotid gland and as it passes very close to the temporomandibular joint it also sends an articular branch to the temporomandibular joint having this situation of being deep at the beginning and then passing upwards in front of the ear then it's away from where the ridge of tissue was felt by the student the last choice the parotid duct this is the parotid gland here and the parotid duct passes from the anterior border of the parotid gland across masseter muscle at the anterior border of masseter the duct pierces the buccinator muscle to open on the mucous membrane of the cheek opposite the second upper molar tooth in this detailed view you can see part of the parotid gland in here and the duct of the parotid arising from the anterior aspect of the gland over masseter muscle and then dips down to pierce the buccinator this is the buccinator muscle in here to open against uh, the upper second molar tooth at the in the vestibule of the mouth it lies in a line between the tragus and the upper lip one finger breadth below the zygomatic arch 
and can be rolled and palpated at the anterior border of the contracted masseter. So this is the answer of choice. It's also important to remember that the superficial position of the parotid gland renders its easy damage in injury of the face or it might be inadvertently damaged during surgical operations of the face. Of the other structures that you can see here is the tortuous course of the facial artery in the front of masseter muscle, the straighter course of the facial vein posterior to the artery, and again anterior to masseter muscle, and also you can see an accessory part of the parotid gland here. It lies on masseter between the duct and the zygomatic arch. This would be the location of the zygomatic arch.